This is episode 17 of Distro Delve Season 2, and in this episode we're going to be looking at Open Sousa, a frequent request on the Distro Delves repo. Distro Delves is a video series where I review Linux distros following a checklist which you can view and submit distros for review on GitHub. Open Sousa and I have quite a bit of history. I started using it back in like 2014, probably before that actually, as my daily driver distro, and the very first video on this channel was talking about OpenSUSE Factory. I tried to use it as my daily driver in one form or another, but I always wind up switching away from it. If you didn't already know, SUSE, the company, which looks like SUS, but it's actually pronounced SUSE, offers SUSE Enterprise Linux and has a business model very similar to Red Hat. Now the OpenSUSE installer is a monster. It's powered by Yast, which we'll do a deeper dive later in the episode, but this thing is massive and it covers all possible bases during the install. OpenSUSE is one of the few distros to use BTRFS as the root file system and it usually uses XFS as the home partition, but on this tiny little SSD, it's only using BTRFS. You can configure your network and a variety of other stuff here in Yast. There's also a bunch of different desktops to choose from, and you can actually drop into the software manager here and install stuff a la carte style. And there's even some pre-install options you can tweak, like around SSH and stuff. Again, this thing is just a powerhouse, and I don't know of any other installer that covers as many bases as Yast does. Now given that OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is what we're looking at here, is geared towards power users and contributors of the project, I can't say I was expecting this cute little welcome app. It's probably standard in OpenSUSE Leap, too, so why not include it here? It's very simple, but I think it addresses enough. There's built-in documentation as well as links to community pages and how to install software and stuff. Now we're using KDE here, and a fresh install only took up 4.8 gigabytes. Not bad at all. Free is reporting that only 710 megabytes of memory is being used, and in HTOP we can say that the CPU isn't doing a whole lot, with only 74 tasks and 138 threads. So this is KDE Plasma version 5.18.3 and we're running OpenSUSE Tumbleweed using a snapshot from the end of March. There's a custom OpenSUSE theme, but it doesn't really change much of anything. The old OpenSUSE themes usually changed the KDE Blue to OpenSUSE Green, and I'm actually a bit disappointed that this theme doesn't even do that. There's a weird OpenSUSE dark theme hybrid thing that seemed incomplete and the color scheme was like totally broken, so I'm not sure what this is all about. The background selection was equally disappointing. The default OpenSUSE background is actually pretty cool, but that's it besides the other background, which is just called Next, which I think is from KDE, not OpenSUSE. Now, unlike the desktop theme, OpenSUSE does change up the default apps a little bit. A number of KDE games are installed, which is weird, as well as many standard KDE apps in Internet, Graphics, and Liberate Office, the Office Suite. However, Dragon Player, or whatever media player KDE has, is replaced with VLC, and Firefox also seems to replace the default KDE Internet browser. And there's also Tiger VNC, which I guess replaces the KDE Remote Connections app, KRDC or P or something. Now that the default apps are out of the way, it's time to talk about Yast. Yast is the old, somewhat archaic, and often criticized sysadmin catch-all application for OpenSUSE. It is quite old, it's written in Ruby, and you can do so much more than what people give it credit for. Seriously, Yast is one of the reasons why I like OpenSUSE. I don't understand why people give it so much slack. So one of the many things you can do with Yast is manage software and repos. The software management app is so freaking fast, it's just solid. I literally cannot think of any other package manager front end on any other distro that is this good. I think Muon probably comes closest. And not only is the software management app super fast, but it's really comprehensive, probably thanks to the zipper backend, and it provides you with so much information about packages. It's just awesome. Now you can manage your repos from here too, and most people probably don't realize that you can add community repos like Pac-Man or the repo for the NVIDIA drivers straight from this GUI. And there's a bunch of different flags that you can assign each repo here. Again, really comprehensive and really cool. So let's go ahead and do a real quick dive into some of the more esoteric features that Yast offers that you probably don't even know about. Here's one for managing the bootloader. You can change the bootloader itself, toggle secure boot, modify the kernel parameters, including the sweet little dropdown for managing CPU mitigations, and a section to set the console theme. During Christmas time, OpenSUSE has a bootloader screen that shows like snow falling and there's a little penguin walking around and stuff. 
Again, something no other distro does to my knowledge. And there's a separate little app for managing kernel settings like the global I.O. scheduler and PCI devices. And how about this service manager? KDE has an app that lets you see systemd services, but Yast takes it to the next level. You can change the default system target from here, as well as get a good look at all the different services, plus view the logs all from this GUI. And then here's another app for sysconfig stuff. There's a ton of really low level settings here that I don't understand, but ah, looks cool. And did you know that Yast even has its own built-in partitioner? I mean, this is the same one that the installer uses, sure, and it functions the same way, but it's awesome. And it can generate graphs, look at that. Now there's even more tools here that I'm not gonna talk about, and the remainder of them are a bit, maybe too deep for me to cover. Like this entire section about networking, LDAP, and Kerberos stuff. Eh, that's not something I wanna talk about in a DistroDells episode. So let's come up for air after looking at Yast to take a peek at NeoFetch. We've got Tumbleweed running here with Linux kernel 5.5.11. 2,190 packages are installed with Bash 5.0. The desktop and theme is Plasma Desktop all the way down, and the terminal font is Hack. Now updates on OpenSUSE are a bit weird because of how everything root level is integrated into Yast. I had mixed results trying to get Discover to behave at all, but the little update applet seemed to handle updates just fine. Updates are usually handled by Yast in that software management tool or with Zipper itself, and since this is a power user's distro, I don't see any problem with that. They don't recommend you run NVIDIA drivers on Tubbleweed because how aggressive the release cycle is, but we're all mad lads here, so we're doing it anyway. You can install the NVIDIA repo straight from Yast, but that doesn't mean installing drivers is easy. There are several different NVIDIA packages to choose from, and you really need to know what you're looking for here. I installed the latest driver and all of the CUDA and Vulkan stuff I could find, so let's just hope that works. Also, looks like the NVIDIA driver version is 440.64. Now let's talk about external and removable devices for a moment. The SD card mounted and unmounted just fine, and so did the Brunchmarks SSD, so that's a good sign. For the archive tests, all of them opened, but the RAR file, which OpenSUSE claims is due to licensing restrictions. Video playback was pretty much non-functional because OpenSUSE ships with almost no support for codecs. The only two audio files that refused to play were the AC3 and WMA file. The video files, on the other hand, the only file that would play at all was that WebM file. And yes, OpenSUSE users, I'm well aware of the Pac-Man repo having used OpenSUSE as my daily driver for years, and I will address Pac-Man at the end of this video. Third-party app support was a little bit spotty. App images worked great after a lengthy one-time startup time, but Flatpak support was iffy. Discover wanted to support them real bad, but it couldn't and basically just crashed every time I opened it. And SUSE doesn't do the snap thing, so I didn't even bother with that. Discover did seem to work when installing regular apps and stuff, but Yast is so good I wouldn't even bother with Discover. I'm not even sure why they have it installed here, to be honest with you. Now, OBS was pretty nasty. It's not in the default repos, so I had to go to the OpenSUSE software site and then find an OBS, like open build service package, to install OBS. And even after I did that, it, it just didn't work. It couldn't find the NVENC encoder. It chose a ridiculously small recording size. And since it defaults to FLV, which is weird to begin with, OpenSUSE couldn't even open the damn format it recorded. And in fact, VLC couldn't open any of the formats that it used. Again, probably a Pac-Man thing, but still, that's dumb. So for folder sharing, I tried Dolphin's built-in sharing option, but it didn't work. Probably because the OpenSUSE Samba config is enterprisey and weird. I wasn't able to get Samba working at all, which is a shame because I know that OpenSUSE supports it, but it's just too complicated for me to figure it out in a distro delves episode like the footage, so whatever. Regular SMB and SSH sharing through Fish work just fine though, so that's nice. Printer support was just no. It seems that OpenSUSE isn't quite up to speed with how modern network printers work. The KDE applet was completely non-functional, and while you can manage your printers through Yast, it's really not good. There's ways to set up network printers here, but my god is it convoluted. I'm not even going to try to get into it, just look at the footage. Why would you want to mess with this? Remember in most distros we've looked at on the series, my HP printer is detected and works right out of the box with no configuration. This is just a mess. Bluetooth support was perfect though. My DualShock 4 controller paired and connected without really any issue. So we're starting off with Geekbench here because I've reordered the benchmarking segment to flow better for recording sessions. I compared Tumbleweed to Netrunner because they're both KDE distros, 
The CPU scores were practically the same, with Netrunner maybe having a slight edge. On the GPU side of things, Netrunner had a clear lead over Tumbleweed, just odd. Mad Max here felt like all of the other distros at first, until I went into a stronghold and got into a fight. It started chugging pretty bad, and I'm not going to blame OpenSUSE for this because we've never tested this particular scenario on other distros. I also noticed that I'm missing most of the counters, and I assure you I am slamming the triangle, but it's just not registering. I'll be sure to do this again in future episodes so that we can look back and compare. The benchmark itself came out to 27 frames a second, which is on par with other distros in the series. GTA pulled a 12 on the benchmark, which is low, but again, it's about the same as all other distros. I didn't notice any issues with the controls or gamepad, but the game itself is sluggish, but it was no better or worse than other distros in the series. Alright, outro time! I've mentioned OpenSUSE in my top 5 videos as being a distro that I'm particularly fond of, and one that I'd like to see make a comeback into the Linux mainstream scene. If Tumbleweed is a snapshot of what the next iteration of OpenSUSE looks like, uh, I just don't see that happening. I mean, do you? With ongoing issues around media playback, printers, and not to mention being an off-brand distro with some generic RPM packages work and some don't, it's just weird. And so for Pac-Man, I said I would address this and here we go. Pac-Man is a third-party repo. Think of it like RPM Fusion on Fedora or a handful of PPAs on Ubuntu. Some are more legit than others, and it gets away with sort of bending the rules around having restricted codec support and things like that. If you want to use OpenSUSE as your daily driver, Tumbleweed or Leap, you pretty much have to use it. But Pac-Man includes versions of existing software already available in the repos, and what if you don't want those? That's where it can get complicated. I feel like forcing a distro to rely on a third-party repo that the core distro doesn't have control over is a really stupid idea, quite frankly. Tumbleweed is made for power users, but OpenSUSE Leap is not. Leap suffers from many of the same damn issues with relying on Pac-Man, crappy printer support, and whatever. I'm eager to see what comes next for OpenSUSE Leap for sure, but if Tumbleweed is any indication of what that next looks like, I hope that they take their time and polish it up a bit more before releasing it to the community. OpenSUSE, the project, the community, the distros, is really cool. And I think that OpenSUSE, Leap specifically, could be a great everyman's distro. It's stable, it's lightweight, it's fast, it's all of those things. But unfortunately, OpenSUSE needs a lot of work. Still. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves, and if you did, and maybe you want to contribute to the series, you can hop on over to the GitHub repo and submit an update to the script or a new distro to review or whatever. If you want to support me and the channel, you can hop on over to Patreon and become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about the channel, and links to old videos that I've archived. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.